Hi, what's up everybody? Um, this is Fisher Coder here. Today we're going through lead code problem 1184. Um, it's called distance between bus stops and labeled as easy, but I thought it's a very interesting question. Um, okay, before we dive into the question, please do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm to help spread this video and also don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel, which is very dedicated to provide good lead code tutorials to help software engineers to prepare um, for coding interviews and land at great dream fan companies. That's it. With that said, let's dive into this problem. The problem goes like this. A bus has n stops numbered from 0 to n minus 1 that form a circle. Uh, look at this example. It has a circle. It's kind of a uh, rectang rectangular, but that's fine. They call it a circle. We know the distance between all pairs of neighboring stops, where distance i is the distance between the stops numbered i and i plus 1 modular n. What does that mean is that looking at this example, this is bus stop 0, this bus stop 1, this is bus stop 2, this is bus stop 3. The distance, which is given, denoted as an array, an integer array, is showing as the distance between these two bus stops. So from bus stop 0 to bus stop 1, the, the distance is 1. From bus stop 1 to bus stop 2, the distance is 2. That's what it means. The bus goes along both directions, which means clockwise and counterclockwise, which means it can go from 0, 1, 2 to 3, and also it can go from 0 to 3 directly, and then 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 1 to 0. That's what it means. And the problem, the, the question is asking us to return the shortest distance between the given start and destination stops. Let's walk through this example. Distance is 1, 2, 3, 4. That's, that's at, as the sides of this rectangular or this circle, as the problem describes it, is 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And the start bus stop is 0, which starts from here, and destination is 1. There are two routes to get to from point from bus stop 0 to bus stop 1, which is either you go clockwise, which is from 0 to 1 directly, and the distance is 1. Or the other way is that you start from 0, go to 3 first, and then to 2, then to 1, counterclockwise. The distance by going this route is 4 plus 3 plus 2, that is 9. So it's asking us to return the shortest distance, so 1 versus 9. So the minimum is 1, so we're going to return 1, right? Um, the same goes for the second example. The distance is given, the same distance, the same bus stop, the same, <laughs> the same cycle, um, the same circle, and the start is at 0, and de destination is at 2. There are two ways, clockwise and counterclockwise. So con clockwise is going to be 1 plus 2 is 3, the counterclockwise is 4 plus 3 is 7, so 3 or 7 minimum is 3, it's this way, marked as in red. Example 3, it's still the same circle, 1, 2, 3, but start and stop destination changed again. It's from 0 to 3. We, if we go clockwise, it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 is going to be 6. However, if we go counterclockwise, it's going to be from 0 to 3 directly, which is 4. The minimum of 4 and 6 is 4. So in this case, we will return 4. Um, very interesting question, uh, but very straightforward. That's what I feel. Um, so the solution is going to be, um, we're going to go, basically we're going to calcul calculate the distance for two routes and return the minimum of the two. That's it, very straightforward. There is no trick in here. But then it boils down to how do we calculate the two routes? The first route is the clock, clockwise route is very straightforward. We just start from the index from zero from the start up until destination. We sum all of them up, right? That's it. If, if you can see the distance for one, how do we get one? We start from index zero. That's where the start is and reach destination, but not hit destination. We go up to destination. That means less than this destination index. That's it, right? 
The same goes for example two. Start from index zero, and then we go up to index two, but we don't hit it. That means we send one and zero, which we get three. The same goes for this. From zero to three, we start from index zero up to index three, but we don't hit. We don't add up index three. That means one, two, three. We add up, we get six. That's that's how we calculate the clockwise route. We just start from the start index and go up to the destination index. That's it. And that's for that's the algorithm of how to calculate the clockwise route distance. Then we come down to how do we calculate the counterclockwise route distance. We'll still use these three examples to go through this. Still very straightforward, but it takes a little bit of trick. Uh, destination here is one, and the destination here is one. So we'll go. We'll start from index at one, right? We'll start from index at one, and then we'll go all the way until the end of the bus stop, which is at index three. We'll sum all of them up, right? Two, three, and four. We sum all of them up, and then we'll have to go back to index zero, but we don't hit it. Because this one is index zero, so we'll just ignore it. That means we add up, we get the sum to nine. For example one. A more clear example is example two. If we, uh, how do we calculate um, compute counterclockwise route for example two? Is that here is the start and here is the destination. We go from, we start from start this way. So destination is two. Let's look at index two. Zero one two is three, right? So three, we we go from three until the end of the array, until the end of the bus stop. So we add up three and four, we get seven, and then start index is zero. So we'll go all the way from the end of the array to the beginning of the array, but we don't hit it, right? Then we get the counter the uh, counterclockwise round distance, which is seven. This is uh, the same goes by for the third example, um, which is very straightforward as well. Um, another thing to note is that one of the constraints it says start and dest and destination. These two indices are both greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, but smaller than n. It doesn't say that the um, the um, Relationship between start and destination. Start doesn't necessarily mean it could be. It doesn't necessarily mean it's smaller than destination. It could be bigger, right? Which means destination is zero and start is three. It's totally possible. So how do we count, um, deal with that case? Very simple. We、we'll、just swap. We、we'll、just、uh, do the comparison in the very beginning of our algorithm and make the swap. Happen so we always make sure that start is smaller than destination. Then our algorithm should work perfectly.、Um, that's the algorithm.、Um, now let's start diving into the code. This is the Java API signature.、Um, I hope all of that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, let's look at the code. Then it will make more sense. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, int start. Uh, let's do if start is greater than Destination. Let me copy this word. It's too long. I don't want to make any typos. Int temp、uh, start and then destin、uh, just assign destination. So what we do in this for loop is we'll swap、um, start and destination if start is greater than destination, right? And then we'll have、uh, one way. We、we'll、just name it as One way to make the variable name shorter to save some typing time, <laughs> and it's this is going to denote the counter and、uh, the clockwise route distance. And then, as I just said, how do we calculate that? It's very straightforward. We、we'll、just start from the start index, go all the way up to destination, then add all of them up, which is going to give us the clockwise route distance. That's it. Right.、Um, if you're still unclear what I'm talking about, let's go through this example again. So, start 
to destination. 0 to 1, index 0 to 1. That means 0. That's it. In this case, the sum for the route distance for clockwise route distance is just a 1. That's it. The second one is, we'll just call it other way, which is standing for counterclockwise route distance. Here, we'll have two for loops to calculate this, but the time complexity is still a win because it's not nested. We'll start from, um, so counterclockwise, let's take a look here. Counterclockwise, which is the, from destination here. We go this way, from start, go this way, all the way until here. That means we will start from destination, go until all the way until the end of this array, as I just said, add all of them up, distance, that's, that's going to give us the rest of the rest of this, uh, the sum, the sum of the rest of the elements of the distance. But still, if the starting point is not at zero, say if it's at one or two, then we will need to add the beginning part, which will start from zero, and then we go all the way up to start. In in this case, in this context, this start is basically equals is equivalent to the destination in the in the clockwise context. We'll add all of them up again as well. That's it. That's that's how we computed the counterclockwise route distance. After that, we'll just return the minimum of the two. That's it. Now let's submit and see. All right, it's accepted. 100% um, faster in terms of runtime and also 100% better 100% um, better in terms of memory usage um, this is a very straightforward question but um, you just need to completely understand how the problem describes how the problem is described and how to really map all of the description into code that's one of the core um, abilities or capabilities the coding interviews are designed to gauge um, candidates. Well, if you like this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, which is a great resource for preparing lead code um, interviews and to prepare for um, SD interviews. That's going to be a great resource. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, please do me a favor and leave any comments, questions, feedback, concerns down in the description below. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video.